13-year-old Khalil from Gaza just landed in Chicago to receive medical treatment. He lost both legs to Israeli bombing in April and was welcomed by members of the biggest Palestinian community in the U.S. Tens of thousands of Palestinians call this area home. The city of Chicago is also about to host the Democratic National Convention. As the U.S. continues to arm Israel for its assault on Gaza, many from this community feel betrayed by the party they've historically supported. The entire world is watching. They're going to see the biggest protest for Palestinian rights ever in the history of Chicago. As the death toll in Gaza rises to over 40,000 killed, we talk to organizers and community members in Chicago's Little Palestine about their message to the Democratic Party and how they might vote this November. We met up with Palestinian American organizer Nida Sahouri in the community she's known as Khalto Nida or Aunt Nida, and she's seen at all the protests. What's the alternative? The alternative. But Kamala already supports a ceasefire. So does Joe Biden. So does Joe Biden. He does. What's different? Joe Biden has said he wants a ceasefire. He proposed it. He's the one who proposed the ceasefire. Okay. Where is it? Israel killed. 24 people last night during the supposed ceasefire talks happening right now. Do they think Trump will stop the genocide? No, of course they don't think Trump will stop the genocide. There is an election coming up, and they're trying to use that to apply pressure to the party that is in charge. Okay? That's it. It was just to sit home and, and, and just do nothing and just criticize. I believe that if you want to change something, you have to change it with your hands. People's binary understanding of politics is actually insane. No, this is a binary situation. This is a binary. They just refuse to recognize it. It is uh, deflective. It is deflective, like moral posturing kind of. What I mean by this is it's no different than when people who want to defend Israel, but like no better than the openly defend Israel, say things like, oh, it's complicated. Like it's not. But they say it anyway, right? They'll be like, oh, it's complicated. It's like, dude, it's not complicated at all. There's just a genocide going on. And um, in this situation, it, it is binary. It's the Democrats say that they want a ceasefire, but are not actively committed to getting a ceasefire. The only way that they can do that, the only way that they can secure a ceasefire is if they actually pressure Israel, okay? And the only way to pressure Israel is by putting weapons transfers on the table for negotiations, which is impossible to contend with like people don't even want to nobody talks about that like it's not it's a non-starter it's a non-starter for so many democrats that means they are not interested in pushing for a ceasefire at all they're just simply using it as a as a talking point that's it hands in may she ripped up a permit application to protest at the dnc after city police raided an encampment at DePaul University. We're going to be protesting no matter what. Thank you. Nidat says that in the 40 years she's lived in Chicago, she's witnessed the Palestinian community grow significantly. So you just feel like you're in, in, in Palestine. That's why it's called Little Palestine. You feel like you're in the West Bank. When my mom came and visited me yeah, the first time, she's like, oh, it feels like you're in, in Ramallah. So you see the culture, you see the stores with Arabic names. We met with her at her house, which was filled with artifacts from her homeland. Tatris is very important for, for Palestinians because every city had its own colors and its own uh, embroidery. Uh, so traditionally it was for dresses for women. And now they're just making uh, a lot of different things with it. Now Israel is trying to steal the embroidery. If you go there, they, they, they claim it. They're claiming the, our embroidery now. And that's why we want to try to make sure that we keep it uh, for us. Nida is the... What? Please explain how the Democrats can stop the genocide right now. It's this, okay? It's this. This is a telephone, okay? You pick up the telephone and you call up Benjamin Netanyahu and you say, Hey, cut it out. No more weapons. Click. Mush mush. And if they still, if they still try to uh, act out, okay. Second phone call. Hey, I noticed that you're still acting out. Sanctions. Click. It won't get to that point anyway, though, because it doesn't matter. 
Didn't Hamas reject the ceasefire like an hour ago? It's breaking news. Why not cover it? Wait, what? I did cover it. I covered it as it directly happened. I covered it for like an hour plus. Why are Democratic Party loyalists that come back into this community after months and months of not being a part of the community come in and immediately chirp me when the answer is it's your fault? Okay. How is this a long-term sub? Let me tell you how. Notice how they've stopped talking after a certain period of time. They weren't like a massive, they weren't like a massive supporter anyway. They weren't like big time chirpers, but notice how there's no activity in the chat until recently. They're the October 7 leavers. Oh. Anyway, I did talk about that. Saying that, oh, it's just Hamas simply uh, refused to, to bargain with Israel is stupid if you're completely oblivious to the reality of the ceasefire negotiations, you will obviously be led astray. If you only look at MSNBC and how they're covering it, why did you ban them? No, Fossabot banned them for spamming. I unbanned them. You're wrong. I did not ban them. I literally unbanned them so they can speak. They got automatically uh, Fossabot banned because they were spamming in the chat. They got timed out. Okay. Overall, overall, there is a ceasefire and permanent cessation of hostilities deal that was proposed by Joe Biden. Joe Biden even went as far as to say that this was Israel's own proposal. As a matter of fact, this was the identical proposal. You just made me sign in. Are you aware people watch you offline? Yes, I am. Israel or not Israel. Sorry. Hamas had brought forward an identical three-phase proposal in February. Biden unveiled it as the Israeli proposal in March. Hamas said yes to it. Israel invaded Rafa, said F that proposal. There's actually parts of that proposal we don't agree with. Then Biden kept repeating the lie over and over again that it was actually Hamas holding up the proposal, when in fact it was always Israel that was holding up the proposal. And they openly held up the proposal to a degree where they ended up killing the principal negotiator on the Palestinian side. My brother in Christ, why do people just want to have reasons to despise you? I don't know. Entertainment. I think a lot of people, a lot of people are just like bored, sad, angry. They want like a accessible person that they can yell at. I get it. Anyway. Um, but yeah, does that make sense? Do you understand? 18 month subscriber. It is not Hamas that is holding up the peace talks. It is America cynically holding up a peace talk to stop Iran from retaliating as is their internationally recognized right to do so after Israel violated their sovereignty. Now, having said that, the current peace talks, the current ceasefire negotiations talks that are ongoing are actually not even supposed to be happening at all because only one side has said no. Hamas has actually said yes to the last ceasefire conversation that took place. Israel said no over and over and over again, and then turned around and actually killed the principal negotiator. Does that strike you as the type of person who wants to actually deal with a ceasefire? Or is that, in your mind, something you do when you want to continue the war? Because once the war ends, you're probably going to go to jail. So you selfishly want to continue this genocide and keep up this uh, offensive military posture as much as you possibly can. Okay? Okay. And America is like your willing uh, ally that is that is going to do your bidding, which is exactly what's going on. The Chicago Chair for American Muslims for Palestine, an organization that teaches people about Israel's occupation of the Palestinian territories. She says that while her focus is on a ceasefire in Gaza, the situation is also dire in the West Bank, where her family is from. Settlers in the West Bank are attacking day in and day out. I just came back. It's, it's, it's bad. Uh, like, it's not safe. Settlers and soldiers can attack any village they want. Palestinian and Arab American voters have historically voted Democrat, but the party has lost support for arming Israel's war on Gaza. Democrats, whether it's Biden or Harris, Democrats failed us big times. They dehumanized us. We are demanding that we are looked at as humans. Palestinian migration to Chicago began in the 1890s, during a time of broader migration from the Middle East to the U.S. Most of the early Palestinian immigrants... My views are generally aligned with yours, but you should still want there to be a ceasefire deal and Hamas needs to accept one. No, your views are not generally aligned with mine on this issue if you don't understand that I've been asking for a ceasefire since October 8. Okay? 
Israel is the party responsible for not coming to terms with the ceasefire. The current proposal that is in table already has a three-step negotiate. Listen to my words, okay? Listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth instead of chirping like a bad faith dipshit, okay? Listen. The ceasefire proposal, the three-step ceasefire proposal with three different phases. Phase one being a ceasefire. Phase two ending with a permanent cessation of hostilities. And phase three being the reconstruction. That proposal was identical to a proposal that Hamas has suggested time and time again. The last one being in February. That proposal was then pushed by the American government. The American government even said that it was Israel's proposal. Israel, as soon as that proposal came out, and it was on a Saturday, if you remember, okay, immediately started going, oh my God, this is not our proposal at all. What the fuck are you talking about? And for months and months and months said that actually this is not the proposal that we want. We want certain things in the fine print to be different so we can continue killing people in Gaza and continue a permanent uh, uh, occupation in Gaza, specifically in the Nazarene Corridor and the Philadelphia Corridor, okay? This is completely against the deal. You cannot have a ceasefire and a permanent cessation of hostilities and a removal of troops from the Gaza Strip while simultaneously saying between phase one and phase two, you're going to give us all the hostages and we can continue blowing up the Gaza Strip, which is what Israel has said over and over again, okay? Israel refuses to say yes to a ceasefire deal as long as the ceasefire is permanent. They do not want a permanent ceasefire. That is not a ceasefire then, okay? It makes no sense. Why the f would Hamas say yes to that? Why the f would anybody say yes to that? The entire world is looking at this as a permanent ceasefire. Israel's the only people that don't want a permanent ceasefire. And, they, and America keeps being a loyal dog to the Israeli officials and claiming that it's actually Hamas that's refusing to deal with it. And there are people like yourself who just watch mainstream media and like don't actually read the fucking fine print at all and come in here and just regurgitate what the fuck they've heard from the New York Times or Axios or MSNBC or CNN. And you come in here and you go, well, Hamas needs to accept the deal. Yes, dude, they, d they have, okay? They have, they have accepted a deal already. They want the deal that they accepted, which America put forward. Anthony Blinken himself has openly recognized that the three-phase negotiation, the three-phase ceasefire, was a deal that Hamas presented in February. Anthony Blinken himself recognized this. Okay? The Hamas leadership does not care about the people of Gaza. Man, shut the f*** up, you stupid f***. Hasbara bot, brother. Oh, my God. Immediately, immediately. Notice how you are not responding to anything I just said. And as soon as, like, the reality hits, you just move the talking point down the line. This is why I said... Uh, you know, 18 month subscriber was gone, only comes back to chirp. Now, who cares about the Palestinian people? Do you think Israel cares about the Palestinian people? Care so much, dude. That's why they've killed 40,000. I care about Palestinians and that they should have freedoms. No, you don't. You don't. If you cared about Palestinians and that they should have freedoms and a place to live safely, you would be advocating to invade Israel right now, okay, with boots on the ground. You'd be like, we need to have an international coalition of soldiers from every Western nation invade Tel Aviv tomorrow so that we can put an end to this apartheid regime. But you don't care about that. You're just saying that as a talking point, thinking that we don't understand exactly what you're trying to do. It is a very idiotic, wishy-washy assessment here. Oh, I want Palestinians to be safe, except Hamas doesn't care about them. That's why Israel keeps pummeling Gaza and killing all the Palestinians. The worst part is when these liberals act like they're acting in the best interest of Palestinians. Yeah, it's just like you don't care. Answer the question. Do you think Israel is an apartheid state or not? Do you recognize what the international organs of justice recognize? Do you recognize what Israeli human rights groups? No, don't do this wishy-washy Netanyahu has to resign bullshit. Okay, shut the up about Benjamin Netanyahu. This is a classic liberal Zionist position. Answer my question. Do you recognize the Israeli apartheid? Yes, there are aspects of an apartheid. No, not an aspect of an apartheid state. That is, again, wishy-washy bullshit. Is it an apartheid or is it not? It's not aspects of an apartheid. It is an apartheid. Okay? And it's not only being kept up by Benjamin Netanyahu. 
okay? It's not Benjamin Netanyahu's coalition. It's not simply just Benjamin Netanyahu. It is an apartheid that the Israeli government has upheld historically. It is an apartheid that the Israeli citizens have upheld historically, okay? There is no, oh, it's aspects of a, a apartheid. Jews and Palestinians should be able to live side by side peacefully. Again, liberal Zionist position. Jews and Palestinians should be able to live side by side peacefully is, again, liberal Zionist position, okay? There is no difference between Jewish people living there and non-Jewish people living there. There is no distinction between these two groups unless you are operating on the principles set forth by a Jewish ethnostate, okay? It is not leadership on both sides that is trash and continues the cycle of violence. It's like saying Nelson Mandela is trash and the ANC is trash, as is the apartheid government of South Africa. No, of course not. You might have an issue with some of the tactics used by the resistance to the South African apartheid. But ultimately, if you were to say such dumb shit, people would laugh at you. Okay? You would literally... People would laugh at you. you would be like, whoa, what do you mean? The ANC is responsible for, for the apartheid in South Africa? Like, what the f*** do you mean? There is one party that is single-handedly responsible for the continuation of this bloodshed. And that party is the Israeli government. Okay? That's it. Comparing Hamas to the ANC is ridiculous? Why would it be ridiculous? Do you have any real argument to say that Hamas has any consideration for Palestinian life? Yes, I do. They are not born out of a random outside group, dumbass. They are Palestinians. They are the orphan children of Palestine. What the f*** do you mean? Any real argument that they don't have any consideration for the Palestinian life? They're Palestinian. What the f*** are you talking about? They are the only game in town in terms of resistance against the Israeli apartheid. That's it. What do you mean? Comparing Hamas to the ANC is not ridiculous. Ideologically, they might not be committed to like some kind of socialist movement but ultimately they are resisting a colonial occupation okay as was the anc back then like who do you think is is murking all these who do you think is murking all these palestinians you think it's hamas you think like you legitimately think like hamas is just like moving up the palestinians and just like you know recreating like bombing conditions or something and like executing them and then being like oh israel did this or do you think israel is actually using american weapons Every one of which is accountable, by the way. Like, we can account for every single one. Why is comparing Hamas to the ANC ridiculous? You still haven't mentioned it. You still haven't uh, updated me on this. Is it because one is Muslim? One is, like, fundamentalist? Do you think their, like, ideological worldview it should be factored into whether their cause is just or not? Because it's not like they're operating on the boundaries of, like, you know hating Jewish people or whatever in the same way that like Israel claims it, it is, but it's not the case. Chatter is in October. Yes. Yeah, Hamas has conducted terrorism on its own people. It's well documented. Dude. So has the ANC. What the f are you talking about? What do you think? What do you think the practice of necklacing is again? What do you think the practice of necklacing is? What do you think that was collaborators would literally get tires put on their necks and burned on fire. Okay, collaborates with the apartheid government. Does that change the dynamic for you? Do you think black people in South Africa deserve to live under an apartheid occupation because of the actions of the resistance groups against said occupation? Okay. Answer my question. Because ultimately, that is all you're stating. Ultimately, what you're saying, of course not. Then, okay, there you go. Then shut the f up about Hamas. That's it, because if Israel wants Hamas to perish, if Israel wants Hamas to have no more political sway, then Israel has all the power to do so, not by violent military action, not by uh, denying uh, Palestinians all humanity, okay? But by doing the exact opposite, Hamas would cease to exist if there was no apartheid, because Hamas is simply Palestinian resistance by any other name, okay? It used to be the PLO, and I'm sure you'd be chirping about the PLO in a similar capacity if it was happening right now, okay? That's it. That's all this is. Hamas itself was an Islamic charity originally when it was first, when it, when it was per, first put together. Yeah. Why they are counter-revolutionary and are no help to... What? What do you mean counter-revolutionary? What are you talking about? Counter-revolutionary? Brother... 
you don't know anything about Palestinian resistance groups, so there's no reason to have this conversation with you. You should probably go back to reading a little bit, okay? Hamas has worked side by side with DFLP, Maoist groups in Palestine, PFLP, Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, Hamas, and all of the other Palestinian resistance groups are actually currently unified. There was a literal deal that was put together in China two weeks ago, as a matter of fact, that completely unified even the Palestinian Authority, or Fatah at the very least, with Hamas and all other uh, Palestinian resistance groups. This has nothing to do with their ideological positioning. Hamas itself has actually advocated to release Fatah members and members of the DFLP and PFLP. So you're absolutely wrong. October 7 wasn't just conducted by Hamas. It was led by Hamas for sure, but every single member of the Palestinian resistance groups were a part of it. So you're just using counter-revolutionary as a talking point here. It's simply just a word that you threw out there to make it seem like you only care about the revolutionary Marxist principles that uh, a potential group has, okay? It's just a buzzword for you. There is one unifying principle for every Palestinian resistance group, which is the end of the apartheid, okay? The end of the genocide and the end of the apartheid. That's it. It doesn't matter what, what other worldview they have. That's the one thing that they care about because understandably, that's the most significant thing that is killing them right now, which is the Israeli government. Also, I would love to hear what you meant when you said Hamas has conducted terrorism on its own people as well documented. Because I think I feel like you just dropped that in there. But yeah, Americans said the same shit about the Viet Cong. The British said the same shit about the IRA. And the apartheid government said the same shit about the ANC. They said it about the Algerian, by, uh, of the FLN as well. Notice how Every single one of those groups, the terrorists were the good guys. Every single one of those groups, the terrorists that were declared terrorists, that were declared to be in the wrong, were actually ultimately the good guys after all. People that you probably read about now and you turn around and go, man, these guys are so sick. They're so cool. They're so revolutionary. The IRA were not good guys. Okay, bro. Sure. Oh. Guarantee there aren't they aren't even Irish? Yeah, probably yeah, no shit. Prince were men who would come to work in the US, traveling back and forth between Chicago and Palestine. But when that became more difficult in the 1930s and 40s, they started buying property and opening shops. After the 1948 Nakba, where Zionist militias forced over 750,000 Palestinians from their homes, the families of the men who had come to Chicago made their way to the U.S. too. When I grew up in the 70s and 80s, the vast majority of the Palestinian community lived in southwest Chicago proper. Hatem Abu Daya is an organizer with the U.S. Palestinian Community Network. But in the last 20 years or so, they've really all moved out to the southwest suburbs. Hatem says the Palestinian community moved to the suburb of Bridgeview, Illinois, and created Little Palestine. We were able to buy a lot of property, be able to buy businesses, able to buy homes, establish like a real hub. Would any of these problems in the Middle East exist if there was no religion? Yeah, no shit, of course it would. Half of the struggles that I just mentioned, uh, oh, every single struggle that I mentioned were not fought on the boundaries of religion, okay? It's never about religion. Religion is just a... Uh, a galvanizing principle on top of it. It's ultimately always about land. It's always about natural resources. That is all this is, okay? It's so silly. Anyway, it's as silly as thinking that there is no three-minute outbreak at the top of the hour. War is always about resources, distribution of resources, distribution of power. Religion is simply a tool to galvanize people, to get people to be on board with your cause. That's all it is. Here. Now, around 85,000 Palestinians are estimated to live in the Chicago metro area, the largest Palestinian community in the country. Hatem is also a spokesperson for the Coalition to March on the DNC, an affiliation of at least 150 organizations planning to protest Israel's ongoing genocide. We have three main demands. One is end USA to Israel, stop the genocide, and stand with and free Palestine. Those are the broad demands. 
Um, but the goals are for the world to see that Palestine has enormous support. Even though Joe Biden is no longer the Democratic candidate, the coalition says it has the same demands for Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is a part of this administration. She's in the leadership of the administration. Um, these policies are her policies. Um, and we haven't seen anything or heard anything from her to believe that she's going to have a different position. Hatem says while some may fear a second Trump presidency, his focus is on the DNC because Democrats are the ones in power. If the Republicans were in party and Trump was already the president and this genocide was going on, then that would have been the event of the season. And the tens of thousands would have been going there. But the reason they're here is because the Democrats are in power, because Biden is the one who's complicit, and Kamala Harris, and Blinken, all of the top Democrats in this country are responsible. They are complicit in the genocide, they have blood on their hands, um, and they're the ones that allow it to happen. But this isn't the first time anti-war demonstrators have protested a DNC hosted in Chicago. In 1968, an estimated 10,000 people protested the Vietnam War at the convention. Chicago police injured and arrested hundreds. While protesters were being rounded up by the police, the crowds chanted, the whole world is watching. This is the event of the season. The entire world is watching. They're going to see the biggest protest for Palestinian rights ever in the history of Chicago. A week before the 2024 DNC, we found this art and rhythm build where organizers were practicing chants and building drums. Can you tell us what you're doing here today? Creating ruckus for the DNC. <laughs> so we came together tonight to make instruments, um, decorate them, and then, yeah, get ready to bring the rhythm with our contingent. Well, the truth is, the Democrats have always sold themselves as, you know, the party of the working class. And they never have represented us. We know Kamala isn't going to represent the working class. She's proven it with her track record. So just because it's a brown face in a high place, it doesn't mean anything to us. I've seen too many dead children, broken up families, to ever think about checking a box near the Democratic Party on the ballot. Corporate Democrats or the corporate Republicans are one and the same. They are both funded by APAC lobbies, corporations. They really don't represent the American voice. We'll continue to march, organize, and raise hell until we get an arms embargo and a permanent ceasefire. Even those within the Democratic Party have criticized the administration. The Biden administration absolutely let us down uh, by unconditionally supporting Israel's genocide. Abdel Nasser Rashid is Illinois' first ever Palestinian American state representative. He grew up in Little Palestine. What you see in Little Palestine is a really real community cohesion. People know each other, it is a tight knit, people care about each other, people look out for each other. Abdel Nasser says he believes most Americans want the U.S. to act differently. The Biden administration has uh, enacted policies that go against what the average American wants. Um, the average American wants us to uh, use our tax dollars to, have, uh, to provide better health care, to provide affordable housing, to tackle climate change, not to send more bombs, more U.S.-made weapons to Israel that then get dropped on civilians throughout Gaza. Is it annoying having to, have, uh, having to wait to have your views be vindicated all the time? Um, I'd rather have it be vindicated down the line than not at all. So as much as it is annoying, as much as it is annoying, it still ultimately doesn't matter. Um, I just want people to, to come to terms with the reality. That's all I care about. I want people to change their perspectives. I want people to advocate for the right things. And they might do it, you know, they might do it later down the line, but it doesn't matter. Ultimately, it's still, it's important that they did that. But he says that the convention and a new candidate might be an opportunity for change. I think the fact that President Biden withdrew from the race and now um, uh, Vice President Harris is the Democratic nominee gives us an opening, gives her an opening to truly engage with uh, young people, with people of color, uh, with progressives across the country, not to mention, of course, the Arab and Muslim community who want to see a transformational change 
um, a fundamental break from the policies of our government that have supported genocide. For the residents of Little Palestine, the first step a Kamala Harris administration must take is straightforward. To start with, we need to stop funding the genocide. We need to cease fire and we need to feed the people in Gaza. But organizers say they're seeing a change in how Israel's occupation of Palestinians is viewed by the world. People recognize it's not just an issue of stop killing Palestinians. You don't know how many people come to hate on you and stay by the end of it, I hope. Palestinians, it's end the occupation and end the colonization and allow Palestinians to return to their homes. And that's the only way that you can bring peace to the entire region. Anyway, all right, everybody, I got to go. Uh, I got to get ready to fly out. Uh, I'll be in Chicago. I'll be in Chicago uh, tomorrow. You already know, okay? I'm going to be in Chicago and be live from Chicago starting tomorrow at the Democratic National Convention. Okay, I love you all. Love.